This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Hello, my name is Basil and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote, and today's quote is, no nation can be ruined by trade. And that is from Benjamin Franklin. With us today in the studio, we have someone who deals with shipping and thereby moving products all over the world. Her company is The Shipping Emporium, and her name is Jane Barnett. Hello, Jane. Hi, Basil. How are you? Good. How about you? Good. Okay, very good. So tell us about your company and what you do. The Shipping Emporium? Yes. Um, my business is focused on, uh, as a licensed transportation broker and freight forwarder, we are focused on helping businesses who need to move goods that are generally about 100 pounds or more, okay. um, internationally or domestic, and they're really just looking to find out what is the best service um, that you can offer for the money. Um, ma many of my customers are smaller businesses, um, some of them may have already have been involved in heavy domestic and or import or export before. Mm -hmm. Some of them are new. Um, the main thing that they have in common is that they don't ship every day. Okay. And so they're looking for the very best service, um, customer service, and the very best pricing as well. Okay. So is the guy who does not ship every day, that's the one you help? Yes. And I mainly focus on businesses and the movement of commercial goods as a licensed um, freight arranger. That means I'm not a carrier directly, but that I'm an indirect carrier and I have access to networks for um, ocean freight, um, air freight through airlines or through um, integrated carriers, uh -huh. um, as well as through um, domestic transportation, through less than truckload, and even some truckload um, options. Um, I have industry contacts all over the United States, and most of my customers are based in um, the United States and need to ship domestically and or internationally. Well, because when you say ocean, so that means I gotta go somewhere. It's, it's right, <laughs> right, the ocean means that you can you can pretty easily find businesses that are involved in both import and domestic freight. And okay. many okay, who are right, also okay. could be involved in export. It's okay. a, I call it a circle, uh -huh. <laughs> you know? So. Okay, so if somebody is shipping, this is my question. If they're shipping daily, that's a challenge for you? If they're shipping daily, a, a business can still come to Shipping Emporium for assistance, but they may not find a better rate. Okay. They may find the same pricing or slightly better, but the, the sweet spot is really that I can offer um, better savings, better value for shipping uh, for businesses that don't ship every day. Um, shipping services, whether it's through land, transportation carriers, I work with over 40 domestic carriers. Okay, so I work with nearly everyone, um, as well as some independent carriers. Uh -huh. um, the rates will vary according to um, which zip code you're going to and from. And, and how large of a shipment is it? How many pallets or crates are packed? Um, because I have so much experience, I know where the, the trouble spots are. Uh -huh. If you have more than six crates or pallets, 
or if you get over you know, five, 10,000 pounds, then we need to start talking to make sure that this is gonna be the most co cost effective op uh, option and maybe you need your own dedicated truck. Um, you know, my customers mainly um, don't wanna be surprised by a bill. Um, I fully disclose everything to them about all the charges that they're gonna occur. Um, as well as all the potential charges, and I also rely on my customers to provide me with accurate data as far as the weight and dimensions of their shipments. Uh -huh. um, for air transportation, um, which could be by um, for domestic or for international, I know it's complicated. <laughs> um, we offer those options. Okay. Very good. Uh, you, you recently changed in the, the, the organization of the way you work with your company. What changed? I have more um, options for businesses who are going to Latin America. I have um, a really strong freight um, partner um, in Miami. Um, I have others in um, Dulles and Baltimore, of course, um, being that we're located in D.C. Um, New York, mm -hmm. um, California, and Texas. Um, my contact in my freight contact in California is looking especially to provide really good rates mm -hmm. on trucks that are headed back to the East Coast. Um, so I would especially want to hear from businesses that are shipping heavy freight from Southern California to the East Coast right now, if they're shipping 500 pounds or more, okay. um, because I can most likely save them save them race based on that combined mm -hmm. uh, freight consolidation mm -hmm. um, is generally how we can get you better rates. Mm -hmm. And you say a minute ago there's over 40 carriers in the country? Yes. Uh, such as, do you want me to name some of them? You don't have to. I'm, I mean, just, I'm just curious. I, well, I guess we know the big names already, but I didn't know there was that many uh, orders. Uh, well, there's so many different freight carriers. Um, many people who've been involved in arranging freight for their business may be familiar with some of the names, such as uh, YRC, um, Conway, um, Roadrunner, um, many others. Some of them are regional carriers, such as Southeastern Freight, AA Coopers. Um, they're Southern based. Um, in the Northeast, there's New England Motor Freight, actually, which is pretty big from Virginia on up to New England. Um, and I find that when freight is transferring from one region to another, you may find that um, Lakeville Motor Freight, in, which is big in Minnesota, will pick up in Minnesota for a shipment to um, New Jersey and maybe transfer to New England Motor Freight there. But they have a partnership. It's an arrangement between carriers because they're regional carriers. It's like airlines, basically. Yeah. Yeah, so in airlines, it's the same thing. If I'm offering air freight services, it's going to probably be the airline that offers the best, you know, the best rates and the best timing um, from, from the pickup destination to the um, consignee or final destination, whether it's domestic or international. Mm. And the airlines that you do, are they the local airlines we know, or like are they like, because they're, for example, cargo airlines, is that specific airlines or specifically cargo airlines you're talking about? Well, it's, Basile, it is, it is very true um, that it's a complicated topic, so I'll just skim the surface. Okay. <laughs> but, but there are, in fact, passenger airlines such as um, uh, United Airways and US Air that are carrying cargo um, for the customers same plane, like mine. Yes. In the same plane, the passengers If it's are TSA it? approved. Oh. If it's, you, you know, if, but if do it's, they, just your question, yeah. do they have specific cargo? I guess it has to be justified for them to have a yeah. specific. Yeah. You can't just grab a plane, send it up there, <laughs> uh, having carrying one box or something. So if it's, um, if TSA isn't happy with the arrangement, there are planes that carry just cargo. I'm sure UPS and all have, have that. Well, if you're talking about a carrier, you're talking about an integrated carrier, by definition, they own their own planes. But there's only four integrated carriers in the world. What does that mean, integrated carrier? Integrated means that from the time that the shipment picks up uh -huh. to the time that the shipment delivers, uh -huh. you're with the same oh, okay. name. Okay. So that's we're usually going to be your small parcels carriers, the big names. Uh -huh. uh, they do own their own planes. But the advantages and or the reasons why you would negotiate through an air freight forwarder or because the, the freight's gonna be heavier, 200 pounds, you're gonna get better rates. The change um, 
and where you want to start looking at freight, air freight forwarding versus on airlines versus um, through an express carrier is about 150 pounds um, because the, the rates are going to be better. Um, and that means also arranging your courier from the pickup location to the airport uh -huh. and then in the final destination, whether it's domestic or international, uh, finding a courier to deliver from the airport and a customs broker um, unless the consignee already has a customs broker. Uh -huh. um, so that's the whole chain of command, if you will, um, for the movement of freight. Uh -huh. Now, it's, it, it's a little bit different for ocean freight, but more or less the same. You've got, you know, a, a, a sea liner, uh -huh. and you've got agents on both sides, and you've got a lot of documentation. Uh -huh. And you've got customs clearance for the customs, um, for the country of import. So it's never a dull moment. <laughs> well, I imagine quite involved. <laughs> quite involved. How do you get into that field? I'm very, very knowledgeable about the transportation field. Um, I'm a very quick learner. Um, at the core, I'm a people person. Um, it's a tough industry. Um, what do you mean by that? It's a tough industry. <laughs> so, well, What do you mean by tough industry? There's a lot of compliance, regulation. Okay. Um, there's a lot of customers who've been burnt um, by carriers or freight forwarders. Um, when I was in elementary school, I aced geography. I've always loved the study of um, geography and people and cultures. And um, I think that that probably ties into it as well, mm -hmm. because I am helping to arrange freight, not just um, internationally, um, but also all over the United States. I'm helping businesses. Okay. So I have to have pretty good knowledge of where they're located. Uh -huh. Where's what closest city are they? What, you know, what city are they closest to? Uh -huh. In Texas or Nebraska or wherever. Okay. And um, so at the core, I'm a people person. Uh -huh. um, I specialize in smaller businesses. Um, I'm a small business owner myself, uh -huh. so I understand all the challenges. Uh -huh. and, and nobody needs to spend five thousand dollars more than they should on a shipment. For example, is that what so, happened at times if they use the wrong carrier? Well, I've got a I've got a good customer that probably ships with me on average about once a month, and um, they do a lot of bids for um, for government contracting. They're a small business as well, and you know Hawaii is about five, probably five to seven hours earlier than DC. And one afternoon at about five o'clock, my customer is calling me because he has this emergency. He needs a sh he needs a shipment to Hawaii, but he needs a quote first. Uh -huh. And he says, "You can do an instant quote." And I said, "You need to ship four hundred pounds to Hawaii by air." I said, um, "We need to check with an airline about this. I know I can get you a good rate for that, but if you go and get an instant quote right now." with one of the major carriers, it's going to be between eight and $10,000, and he confirmed that. What is that instant quote? What does that mean? You can go, if anybody who has an account with a carrier can go online and log in and, and run their own quotes. But the next day, I found out that I could do that shipment for them for $4,000, so it otherwise cost $8,000. That could make the difference between whether or not they win the, the contract. Okay, let me just, I don't want the audience to be confused. Instant quote is what? You go online and then find out how much it will cost to sh ship this. That's what is instant quote? Yeah. Okay. They're and when they come to you, it's like what? You do research and try to find the lowest rate. Is that what it is? What's the yes. difference? Okay. Gotcha. It, okay. Saves a lot of, it saves a lot of headache. And usually the quotes um, that I provide to a customer will be through an email so mm -hmm. they can see it. Mm -hmm. Um, but depending on what type of a quote they need, it could take anywhere from two hours to two days for me to come back with an estimate. Uh -huh. um, sometimes it can be because of the time zone differences. Um, a customer uh, earlier in the week who was asking about um, sending an 800 pound shipment to Guam, which is a US territory in the South Pacific. Uh -huh. And I said, we are we talking about ocean or air? because this is the South Pacific we're going to, mm -hmm. and it's going to be expensive. <laughs> and by the time she got back to me, I found out that probably ocean freight would be best for them because of the, it would significantly reduce the cost uh -huh. for that 800 pounds. But then you've got a time difference. 
a very significant time difference, which will play into the you know, 48 hours to get a quote, you know, and it's not an instant quote. Uh -huh. Because it has to be very um, tailored to the customer's need because we have to know what's shipping, we have to know uh, what is the weight and dimensions, is it going by air or sea, and it's much better for them to kind of decide ahead of time what's more important to them, lower cost or faster transit time, because air freight will probably cost two or three times as much. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Now, how do you compare what you do with the economy? How do you read your action, your activities with the economy? How does that impact the economy? For the economy? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the economy is dependent on the movement of um, commercial goods. Mm -hmm. And there, there are th literally thousands of containers uh, being imported from um, around the world, especially Asia, mm -hmm. um, every day. <laughs> and and from, that, from that movement of import, I mean, the, the, the made in China we see all over the place? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, um, a lot of the businesses that are receiving um, materials from overseas are also manufacturing here in the United States. Um, there may be some products which end up being 50% manufactured here and 50% manufactured overseas. Oh, I see. And so um, this time of year, you're going to see a big uh, influx of um, incoming freight also because of the Christmas season. And businesses anticipate that they're going to be selling more. So you're going to have import of toys and import of games and import of shoes and, and the list goes on. Uh -huh. And so I can be involved in really in the arrangement of and transportation of um, uh, these commercial goods um, for any business. Now, I wouldn't be involved for a consumer or household, really, um, but a lot of my, you know, some of the customers might be wholesalers who have households that are, that are buying from them. Uh -huh. um, so the end user could be, you know, household. Okay. Um, but a lot of my customers will actually be buying and selling goods from um, manufacturers and wholesalers in other states. And they could be 100% U.S. made or they could be 50-50. Uh, materials from overseas and 50% materials manufactured here in the States. Okay. Now, as you know, well, can you say is that an increase? How do you read the number? Is that an increase of movement or less movement uh, compared to last year? What do you see in your economy? It's busy. There's a lot of shipping going on. Um, there's a lot of support for businesses who want to do export. Um, so, you know, I've got some businesses that are involved in um, set say solar technology mm -hmm. and uh, we've, we've got to ship it and, and the minimum weight on the shipment is 100 pounds mm -hmm. and whether they're going domestic or international I can help them. What do you them. mean by the minimum weight? Well usually if they're shipping a solar, usually a solar panel uh -huh. or something like that that's like going to be the typical shipment mm -hmm. that I'm involved in arranging trans uh, freight for. It's going to be something like that. So basically, if, oh, I guess you, you, what you're trying to say, if somebody wants to ship a box that's less than 100 pounds, they don't have to come to you. No. They go to any regular carrier or post office or whatever. Is that yeah, I mean, if it's definitely, if it's a consumer or household, definitely. Um, most businesses don't really need assistance with smaller packages. Gotcha. Um, so basically what they buy, for, or they not buy, but they come to you when they need assistance, something is cumbersome, big enough, and what have you, they can put it, send it to the post office or whatever, and that's where you come in. Yeah, I mean, there's really a difference in the service that I provide and the dif difference in what a, um, um, a retail store or the post office provides. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, that um, a lot of my customers are businesses um, dealing with a huge expense uh, when they're moving around um, uh, goods to and from their loading docks. Um, I mean, but you're dealing with a huge expense. It's a huge expense, sh shipping and freight. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, even if a business is only um, paying for two shipments a month, it can be $2,000 a month. Okay. And if I'm saving them even 25%, mm -hmm. I'm saving them $800 a month. And so that's, that's really where I'm more likely to, to be involved. I mean, a bigger company that's shipping daily is probably going to have an in-house logistics manager. Gotcha. Okay. So that's really kind of the middle ground, like between the consumers and the really big businesses where I'm basically working with smaller businesses 
you see? But there's still a lot of shipping, and there's a huge need. Um, so they know they can call me whenever they need me. There's no like obligation to ship every week. They mm -hmm. don't have a shipment every week, my typical customer. <laughs> so. I see. But they, they're usually busier between now and, and January. Mm -hmm. And they should probably start preparing now because <laughs> if you wait until after December 15th, it's going to be hard to get a shipment um, on time without paying excessive fees. Um, what happens the last two weeks of the year is um, usually carriers will give you an estimated um, transit time, you know, two days or something like that. Well, d during the last two weeks of December, just add two days to that <laughs> because it's really busy, <laughs> you know, with the, with the holiday season. Uh -huh. Okay. So. But there's not a lot of people who do what you do. That's oh, what I actually, there actually are a fair number of um, transportation brokers and freight forwarders. They, they probably don't network as much as I do, but okay. um, we're yeah. definitely out there. And, and, and it's pretty much, um, you know, for the same reason why you would go to a, um, uh, why would you go to a travel agent? Why don't you just go to the airline? Well, the airline's going to charge you $1,000 for an airline ticket that could cost 600 through the travel agent. Plus, the travel agent has a lot of knowledge about where you might be going to visit on vacation. Um, they're going to know what regulations there are, what visas you need. See what I mean? Uh -huh. So if you go one to one carrier, captive to them, you're not going to get the best price. And also, there can be different rules and requirements um, for, for domestic as well, uh -huh. especially for heavier shipping. Um, so you want to go with somebody who kind of knows um, how to set everything up correctly. Um, I had a pretty large shipment uh, a couple of weeks ago and um, they had 10 different pallets uh -huh. that were shipping. And so in order to keep the price down, I booked it with two carriers. I know it sounds funny, but it's like you can only make a reservation for so much freight on a truck oh, okay. <laughs> you know, without paying excessive um, mm -hmm. fees and things like that. Um, so it's like I tell people why, they say, well, why do I have to go with two carriers if I have over um, six pallets or crates? Well, it's kind of like if you go to a restaurant and you have 12 people instead of four, you want to call ahead <laughs> so that the restaurant is ready for you. Mm -hmm. Now you're taking up a significant amount of space and um, you want your, your shipment to, to cost um, the right price. So we've got to work with the, the system that's there. There's two carriers that offer a similar price. I can give you one invoice, mm -hmm. but two bill ladings. <laughs> so, okay. so. Makes sense. I guess uh, that's a technical data that the, the, sh the, the business person does not have. And that's what, they, that's what you provide to them. Right, right. And otherwise, they may be told that your shipment is too big, you're going to need a dedicated truck. Well, you don't need to do that. So. I see. Hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, these are the points that you need to advertise then uh, to the people so that you can get them the exact precise uh, amount of uh, the exact precise correct shipping without costing them anything based on the knowledge that you have right. in the industry and what have you. Right, right. A lot of it is just you know, knowledge that I can share with any customer. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of the options are going to depend on where you're shipping to and from. Um, I was helping um, a, a woman with a business based in Nova Scotia, Canada, ship um, to Florida. And she introduced me to her customs broker to make sure that they had information and vice versa. And they said, so is this shipment going by sea or by air? I said, neither. It's going by land. Okay. <laughs> because literally, you know, in that, in that case, you have three choices. Now, how many places do you have three choices? You can go by sea, land, or by mm. air. So. And then you get the opportunity in that way to check all three and let them know what would be the best price. Yeah, and land well, Unless they have somebody, as you say, in some company who have somebody dedicated, dedicated in logistics, who will then do the homework of checking out and then it telling them. It can take hours of time to research. And also, if you're not, if you're an infrequent sh shipper, you're going to pay a lot more on your own. And you don't have as much knowledge about the industry. It's like a lot of industries um, where you just, you know, when you, ha when you have an advocate, 
um, to help you work with a carrier. Plus, I have really good relationships with both customers and um, carriers. So, um, and that I keep all the communication going and um, anybody who works for me is gonna have the same philosophy of um, doing a re really good job of taking care of customers. Um, so mainly that's how I position my business then is um, as a business to business advocate for small for small businesses who, who want to make sure they have the best services for the money for their um, domestic and international freight shipping. Okay. So basically to sum it up, somebody want to ship something and uh, which is over 100 pounds, mm -hmm. they come to you and say, I want to ship this, that, this over here. And you go and do the homework, the study, to find out what is the best way to get it there within the time fit period they're looking for. Right. And get them the best uh, rate or price uh, they can get it. Right. And sometimes I will send them two options. Um, but I will try to find out as much as possible ahead of time what the customer needs. I mean, most customers who've already been involved in heavy shipping know all the questions. It doesn't matter who they talk to in the freight industry. The questions are quite extensive. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, you know, part of the process is I can usually determine in 15 minutes if I can help you or not. Okay. Just an initial conversation um, to see what it is that you're shipping um, and where you're shipping to and where you're shipping from. And if that takes 15 minutes, then I can tell you if I can help you or not. Okay. So. Well, uh, thank you very much. I just want to squeeze a couple of things over here before we end the show. Sure. Uh, well, just so you know, we host a monthly breakfast event in Fairfax, and that will be at the Old Town Hall. Uh, it's generally the third Thursday of the month from 7.30 to 9. We'd love to have you there. Uh, we get together with 40 to 50 business people. And also, you should know that we have our next expo coming up on November the 14th. That will be at the Stacey Sherwood Community Center with about 100 exhibitors and three to 400 business people. So if you exhibit, you want to go to our website and get some information on it. That is ultbizexpo.com. Uh, we have room there for you to join us, but also the breakfast event. Well, thank you very much for coming. I think that uh, you. you provide yeah. valuable information and a, big, a much bigger understanding of your industry and what you can bring to the table to all those fellow business people. I'll see you at the next breakfast. Definitely. And you can see Jane's website there on the screen, so feel free to contact her, and she will happily answer any question you may have. Again, thank you very much for joining us, and as always, have a very productive day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available coffee, teas, chocolate, and other products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well.